I have a bill, it's, it's uh, 3077, Senate Bill 3077. It's really a continuation of something we did last year. It uh, creates the Local Food Infrastructure Grant Act. And uh, last year we were able to get $2 million in the budget that was uh, uh, used to help promote specialty farms, uh, uh, different growers within our Illinois uh, area, um, so that they could, uh, uh, you know, process food, uh, send food to market, and uh, and to really be entrepreneurs and and to be successful at it. The reason this is important is that we don't need to have our food come from 2,000 miles away. We've got the richest fertile ground right here in Illinois, and we've got a lot of uh, uh, farmers, uh, families that want to be able to produce and sell their food at market. And some of them need a little help. They may need help in terms of how do you process it, uh, um, you know, the, just their, their business model, whatever it has. Last year, we were very successful in uh, seeing that, uh, that food from grown in Illinois was able to get to market, whether it was uh, uh, in uh, you know, farmer's markets, whether it was at schools, whether it was at grocery stores. Uh, this is a way that we can help diversify agriculture, which is very important to us. I believe that this bill is really important because it – continues that partnership between agriculture and, uh, and our local communities. We always talk a lot about food insecurity and food deserts and how do we, uh, how do, what do we do to uh, kind of pull those things together. And I think that this bill goes a long way in doing that in a very uh, non-traditional type, type of way. Uh, last year, we passed the Grocery Initiative to address food deserts across the state. And that law allowed DCO to provide grants and other forms of financial assistance to privately owned grocery stores and grocery stores owned by units of local government, school districts, community college districts uh, that may be located in a food, in a food desert. So uh, last summer, I just happened to be out and about and someone stopped me and started talking about this phenomenal self-service grocery store that they, they talked about it in terms of a roadside farmer's market in a building. And, I, and I'm like, wow, what, 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 is, what is it? Talk to me about it. And, um, and the more that I started hearing about it, I said, oh, I really want to pursue it. It's an opportunity for a uh, community, rural community in this instance, that it that could be in an area considered a food desert to get products that are very uh, fresh, nutritious, uh, and we're not just talking about fruits and vegetables, and those things are important, but we're talking about uh, pork and beef, eggs, milk, just about any and everything. And um, this is a great opportunity for people to get those those food, nutritious foods that are fresh, but it's also an economic opportunity for the farmers in those areas to be able to sell their pro their uh, their products to uh, local consumers. We've been talking about nutrition and uh, providing for healthy food, and my bill, Senate Bill 1931 does that, but in a little bit of a different way. Um, when, the legisl when HB 2471 passed last year and the governor signed it, it paved the way for the uh, Illinois School Board of Education, ISBE, and Illinois schools to participate in a broader school lunch program. We recognize the importance of healthy meals to kids' growth and well-being. Indeed, giving all children access to free Healthy school meals is proven to improve their health, their well-being, and academic performance. We proudly passed that bill, the Healthy School Meals for All Act, which provides that free breakfast and lunch to students. While the legislation passed with strong bipartisan support, it didn't receive the funding. It was subject to appropriation. That's why this current session, Senate Bill 1931, uh, is an appropriations bill to do just that. And so this appropriation would expand access to free school meals to all of those who need them. Kids in schools live in food deserts. Um, while more than 315,000 Illinois children experience food insecurity, one in five of those in food insecure children are not eligible for free or reduced price school meal programs due to outdated income eligibility requirements. 
black and Latino children are twice as likely to experience food insecurity as white children, making free school meals available to all children can reduce disparities in health and education outcomes and advance racial equity. It will reduce stigma, which is a significant barrier to school meal participation for students who qualify. School meals are required to meet federal nutrition standards, meaning they contain nutritious foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean protein. Research shows that students who eat school meals eat more healthy foods than those who do not eat school meals. By including this funding, we can support all schools across Illinois to provide free breakfast and lunch to all students. This bill is good for students. Providing free school meals for all kids is estimated to save between $640 and $1,200 per child per year. That's money that can go right back into the pockets of the families who need it most. Since their children will be receiving two free meals a day at school, this funding can also help families lessen their reliance on food pantries, alleviating the burdens these organizations face in providing food to those in need. This bill is good for families. Eight other states, including our neighbors Minnesota and Michigan, have recognized how important this is and passed and funded permanent school meals for all policies. And it's time we do the same. My bill um, is breakfast after the bill. And it, exactly what it sounds like, breakfast after the bill. And it allows students to be able to grab uh, something in the classroom some form of breakfast in the classroom uh, to help uh, take away a, 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 a growling belly or to give them energy that they so deserve. And here's what we've known all along, but when COVID came, it really exposed it. If our kids aren't in school, a lot of them don't eat, right? And so when they get to school, the expectation from us policymakers is that there should be a breakfast for our kids. And oftentimes, our kids don't make it in time to have breakfast in the cafeteria. So the, bre the whole breakfast after the bill, uh, maybe you can do the grab and go model. As, as you walk to your class, you have a pre-packaged uh, pre meal, you take with you and you go in the classroom and you eat. Most teachers um, state that it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for a kid to have that much needed breakfast. We are looking to get rid of the 30 cent for breakfast for a reduced lunch and the 40 cent for, for lunch, right? The reduced part of it, that's 70 cent a day. And so we, we don't wanna put that strain on a family. 70 cents a day, five days a week, over the course of a school year adds up really, really quickly. We know kids do better when they have something to eat. Their attention span is better. Their math score is better. There is a decrease in truancy. They show up for school. Uh, and by virtue of showing up, that school district gets more funding from the state. So ultimately, you win. It's a win-win situation. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to keep up to date with news from the caucus. For more information on what the senator is working on, you can follow them on social media using the links in the description below.